One of the reasons I want to use Protectly is to use the Protectly as a NAS storage as well. So you can see here that one virtual machine that we created, it was for the firewall, which is purely used for firewall. You can see here on this particular one, we had the PCI devices which are passed through here. And now, of course, we have the storage available right now and we do have the uh, processing power and RAM also available. RAM is sufficient here. We need to install TrueNAS here so that I'll be able to use uh, this particular uh, Protectly as a NAS storage as well. I had two terabyte of storage here. You can see here right now also I have 1.8 terabyte available and I will be using one terabyte mainly for storage that will be used for the backup from other devices from the home lab. And of course, you might have a question about using the TrueNAS as a virtualized environment and not passing through SSDs. So I'm not installing it on the physical SSDs. I'm installing on the virtual disk. Only the reason is because this is not my primary backup, but it will help me that in case I'm traveling, so I will be taking a Protectly with me. In this Protectly hardware where OpenSense is installed, I will be creating a new virtual machine here for the TrueNAS. And for this purpose, I'll be using TrueNAS Core because I don't need TrueNAS Scale because I'll not be installing any additional uh, virtual machines or the uh, containers. So for containers or virtual machines, Proxmox is my requirement only right now. TrueNAS will be used as a virtualized uh, NAS storage. So here I'll be using TrueNAS Core 13.0. I'll be downloading the stable release. This is what is recommended. And here is TrueNAS Core 13.3 U1.1. So I, I won't recommend you to go for 13.3. Just go for 13. Whatever is available as a stable release, go for that. And this one is supported version. You can see here 13.3 is unsupported. So if you want to use for production use, you go for it. So I have already downloaded the stable release. So I'll be first of all going here and I will upload the ISO image here into the Proxmox. So in Proxmox, you will go to local storage here, ISO image, and we'll upload the ISO image. Here, TrueNAS, you can see here TrueNAS 13.0, upload. It is 1 GB of the file size, so we will be just uploading it. It won't take much time. All right, so ISO image is uploaded now. Now we need to install it, of course, to install TrueNAS core. You need to have minimum 6 GB of RAM. For the installation, you need the uh, 32 GB and for the storage then you can add multiple storage as I'm using the virtualized environment so one uh, storage will be enough one additional disk will be enough so we'll be going here to protectly I'll create the virtual machine here and I'll give it a name TrueNAS and default resource pool will be using and here CD and DVD I'll be choosing from the list which is TrueNAS and click next and graphics card, everything, I will uh, recommend you to leave it default. Here, disk, we will be adding more disks, in fact, here. First one will be LVM. It is 32 GB. This is fine. 16 GB is minimum required. 32 GB is recommended. So you can go for it. And I'll be adding one more disk here, which will be then 1024 GB, which is one terabyte, of course. This will be used for the storage. Uh, this one will be used for the so this one is 32 gb and this one will be 1024 gb which will be one terabyte so this is how it will work so we will move next then is the cpu one core is fine but we will be going for two core cpu and next and here finally we'll be adding 6 gb of the ram which will be 6144 these many MB and then we'll be using VMBR0 because this is my home lab network so that the devices on the home lab can also store the data and of course we can add multiple network cards also that we will see later click next and finish now the TrueNAS is created here and you can see here when we go to hardware you can see there are two disks right now available one is one terabyte and one is 32 GB RAM is here 6 GB and 2 core CPU. And of course, uh, we will now begin the installation. So I'll go to console. I'll maximize the screen so that you can see it clearly. Start the virtual machine now. And here you go. So here you can see it says to load the TrueNAS. 
we'll start installing TrueNAS now. And here we'll do install upgrade. So 8 GB is recommended here. So anyways, we'll continue with this. And here you can see the uh, disk as we have added two disks here. One is the 32 GB, another is one TV. So we'll be going for 32 GB here and install the operating system here. Provide the password for the root user. So we'll be going for boot via BIOS. So we'll wait for this to complete and then I'll come back to you. Here you can see that TrueNAS has been installed. So we'll just press enter and we will shut down the system now. It will ask you whether you want to install upgrade. Of course, we have already installed. So we'll shut down this now. And once it is down, then we will just remove the installation media. So I'll go back here to the hardware and from hardware, I'll remove the installation media, which is CT DVD. But make sure you never remove these drives from here because these are, of course, your storage. Now we will go back here because I want this to turn on automatically. And here also, I will increase the RAM, which will be 8 GB, which will be 8192 MB. As 8 GB is recommended, so we will be going for it. 8 GB RAM. And as you can see, we have 16 GB total available. Of course, uh, still I have 8 GB available. It's fine. So we'll be just starting TrueNAS now. And once we start, so we'll be able to configure the additional storage. So here you can see that it has now started without, of course, the installation media because it is directly installed on the Proxmox. So it will get the IP address automatically. Then we will be configuring it using the web user interface but let us first of all see it so this will take long time we have to just wait for this to complete all right so you can see here vtnet 0 link is up and it will automatically get the ip address and we'll configure the ip address also that i'll show you later and here you can see that it has got the ip address uh, https and http 10.11.12.204 of course, you can do various configurations from here, but now our TrueNAS is ready and we can uh, start configuring it using the web user interface 10.11.12.204. Of course, DHCP has provided the IP address. Enter. And here we'll be entering the user ID root and the password that you had set up. And we are done with it. Now you can see that 7.9 GB is the total RAM and out of this 6 GB is still available. We'll be looking at Protectly now to see if uh, we have the resources available. You can see here that even if TrueNAS consumes 100% of the resources, still 12 GB is used, 3 GB is still available. So this was the reason I wanted to use this and I want to utilize the maximum available resources. Uh, Protectly is working as a firewall. Protectly is also working as a, a NAS storage. So we'll now configure the NAS storage, of course, as we know that we have already added storage into this. And if you see here storage, I can go into disks. So you will see these two disks are available. Of course, one is the boot pool. Another is available for the storage. We will be simply going into storage and we'll be clicking on pool and we'll be creating our first storage pool by using this disk. So I'll click on add. And the moment you click on add, it will say you to create a new pool. I will create a new pool now it will ask me that what type of disks you want to choose of course it gives you a warning that uh, it is recommended to use the serial number for the disk because this is not a physical disk so that's why uh, it will be giving you unknown it is fine we'll be giving it a name protectly nas so down here we will be clicking so here we'll be using protectly so if you see here suggested layout so this is the layout dev data here one tb i'll force this it will of course give a warning that all the data will be lost yes we want to continue with this and here we go so here we can see that our file system is ready our one terabyte of the storage is available inside the storage pool if i go into the storage pool you can see here these are this is the first pool which is created so i can now start using this by sharing this as a directory so i can go here to windows share i can add a windows share and i can choose from the mount path protectly you can see here mount path protectly is added because this protectly was created as a storage pool 
and that storage pool is named as Protectly. So this was about installing TrueNAS on Protectly and on Protectly we installed the Proxmox and then we have installed TrueNAS. So now this Protectly is working as the uh, storage device also and it is also working as the firewall device. I will be taking the backup of the virtual machines from the other Proxmox servers to this particular one as a backup. So let us continue to next video now.